Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and man, we've got the epic music going on here. It's uh, it's actually quite loud on my speakers, but I've got it dumbed down on game on the not game hard on X Split. So hopefully, it should be a little bit easier. And there we go, the music's dying down anyway. So awesome, Daily Masters once again. Uh, how are you guys doing? I am doing pretty awesome, and I'm guessing you guys are doing pretty awesome as well because you're watching Daily Masters. So yeah really really nice and I think this is from Dreamhack Valencia as well and yes down the bottom right side of the map we do have a little bunch of icons in the way but it is going to be sort of our red zerg player and up the top left side of the map we have none other than Lucifron our blue Terran player so gonna be starting this daily masters with a wonderful TVZ going on here once again I believe from the round 32 of Dreamhack Valencia that sounds about right and yeah it's gonna be freaking awesome I don't know why the music sounds so loud to me I assume it's okay in the video and uh, we'll just have to check afterwards to make sure it is but yeah I have I have faith that it will be okay actually let me just really quickly check yeah all right so there, there is the correct settings it's just a loud song the louder the normal song coming out of my speakers and yeah it should should be fine on the actual cast now looking at this stuff what have we got going on not a whole lot it's pretty standard 14 pool 14 hatch into a 16 pool or whatever it is and yeah for Lucifron pretty standard as well barracks first we have seen Lucifron uh, do some pretty crazy stuff, like a command center first up the top. But now it's going to be barracks first, and it is going to be a Reaper coming straight out. And sort of hasn't tried to penetrate, get in there nice and quickly, so... He's, he's going to be fine, his Overlord is going to see whether there's not there's a fast command center there, and that's all he pretty much needs to know at this point. He'd be pretty crazy not to be expecting a Reaper out of Lucifron. But then again, I don't. We haven't really cast that many games out of Sword of, so for all I know, he may actually be crazy. But we can assume that even if he is crazy, he still knows how to play against a Terran player. So yeah, should be fine. I'm actually going to turn my speakers down because yeah, that is that is pretty loud. Um, bloody music. Uh, so yeah, going on, getting some stuff done. Spawning pool down for our Zerg player, Double Queen. So he's following uh, one of the standard uh, sort of Zerg playbooks for getting your hatcheries and your queens out. And the Reaper actually getting out quite fast, so he's going to have a ton of time to uh, have a go. Not a ton though, because the Lings are going to come out any second. And there we go, chasing the Reaper away. And a bunch more Lings over there. Going to be knocking him all over the place. That Reaper is going to be able to run away, it is going to be able to survive, but... They've chased him away long enough and for enough time for the Queens to come out and right now this Reaper is pretty much ineffectual. Uh, yeah, he's not going to be really doing that much at all. And there he goes, getting knocked away. A second Reaper finally showing up and they may be able to have a crack at a Queen but that's going to be very, very tough. Two Reapers trying to take down a Queen and the second Queen actually coming down. So really putting the hurt on. He's not even leaving the queen up there. He's got a third queen already building. Reapers actually doing a bit of damage to the Lings, trying to hop up on the ground and snipe them off before jumping back down. So that's very, very nice. And under the cover of all this really, really hardcore Reaper harass, Lucifron is getting an expansion. He's already got an expansion. He's just got to convert it to an orbital. There it goes. So this, this Reaper harass, a bit crazier than you would normally expect. Really, really keeping the pressure on, making sure that there's no lings anywhere. And uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, flash photos and an LCD monitor don't mix um, that well. So, yes, somebody just got yelled at, I'm quite sure. Bunch of Reapers coming in here and just keeping the pressure on, man, keeping the pressure on. And, yeah. So, I mean, sort of has not managed to scout out this expansion yet, I believe. I'm not going to switch over because that screws up this uh, display, gets rid of this thing. And we do love this display, but I do feel like, um, or maybe, maybe the Overlord came over there, scouted it. And 
Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing either sort of moved an overlord out there, saw the expansion and the overlord got killed, or he just assumed there was going to be an expansion here off this really fast attack. So yeah, that's going to be fine. Another thing that um, the Reapers actually did though was delay this expansion. Zerg players, when they know the Terran is expanding, they like to get a third ASAP. So he probably would have got one at least a minute earlier than he currently has. Um, if he had known that the Terran player was going for that expansion. But those Reapers really, really shut down the front gate. Nothing could get out. And yeah, it took ages for the Zerg player to finally get enough forces to really push him off. And now sort of getting a ton of links around on the map. He's going to be testing the waters, but this beautiful setup. And he's even got a siege tank out there, just the single siege tank before switching into the, uh... I don't actually know what he's going to build here, but... With a factory coming out, earth and armory coming out, looks like Hellbat drops would be my guess. And yeah, there we go, Hellbat drops coming out. So that's going to be pretty freaking awesome, and... Sort of? Uh, he's not super equipped to deal with Hellbat drops. He really needs something a bit more, a uh, bit bigger than, um than the Lings to deal with Hellbat drops. Queens are okay, but if you got f two Hellbats, Hellbats can take on a Queen, and the two Hellbats are usually win, so you need something else in there. Either either Hydras or Roaches. Roaches are definitely the best against Hellbats, but Hydras are not too bad either. And he is getting some, uh, whatchamacallit, some Spore Crawlers on there, and that'll be fine, but once the Hellbats landed, then sport callers are not going to do crap and he's actually thinking of getting a third base out here so not super super fast but fairly fairly aggressive third base fairly aggressive he doesn't have a lot of units to hold off against that um against a stream of links coming down to this base i suppose he can just lift up straight away but a fair amount of workers will die if a stream of links just comes in there so a little bit scary but Obviously, Lucifron feeling that it's um, it's worth the risk. Me, personally, I'd probably just leave it back and just build workers off it for a little while, but I don't know. I mean, he's uh, 22 on this one and 20 on that one, so he's definitely filling up the bases he currently already has. So, yeah, I suppose he really does need to get that base down. This poor Marine actually managing to survive, so really, really nice there. Here comes the dropship. The Overlord is going to see it. It's going to buy him a precious few seconds. There he goes, sprints in. And a whole bunch of Lings waiting. And yeah, Lings. I mean, if you're if you got your Hellbats in the middle of the mineral line and you're roasting stuff, it's a lot harder for the Lings to kill them. But if the Lings know are already there and the dropship hasn't landed, then yeah. They they just position themselves under the dropship and the Hellbat dies half of a quarter of a second after it's dropped down. So not gonna be good. Looking for another place to drop, manages to find one. And there's still not many uh, units other than Lings and Queens on this map that can really do. Um, so he's still going to have trouble dealing with the Hellbats. He's got Bailings, and Bailings can be used to take out the Hellbats, but it's a bit of a waste of a Bailing to really hit up against Hellbats because they've still got quite a lot of health. So he does not want to roll the Bailings into the Hellbats. And here we go. Looks like he's going to get a bit of a. He's actually got the blue flame on these Hellbats. So that's going to be really nice, but just too many Banelings coming out there. The Zerg player had the overwhelming force, and the Medivac will pick up those Hellbats and carry them over to safety. Or maybe not safety, maybe uh, just going to be roasting some drones over here. Actually trying to drop them over there, killed a few Lings and then lifted them up straight away. So very, very nice micro from Lucifron, but uh, no less than we expected. And yes, looks like sort of is finally kicking into high gear with his build. He's got a fourth base down, he's got 72 workers, and he is starting to pump out the Mutas. And this is going to be something that Lucifron is going to have to deal with. We can see him switching into a ton of muted, um, ton of Marines, sorry, and getting a couple of Widow Mines out as well for good measure. So he knows how to deal with Mutas, he knows the units that he needs to get, and I feel like he should be just fine for the time being. But this fourth base that the Zerg player has... The longer it's up, the uh, more crazy macro the Zerg player is going to be able to do. And so, yes, taking down this fourth base, definitely a priority. And it looks like he is going to be able to do it here. Just at the very edge, those Marauders sacrificing their lives. 
to take care of it, and the rest of these forces all going to go down. Even the broodlings from the uh, hatchery going down. I think they got a fair share of kills over there. And yeah, so Lucifron sacrificing a fairly large amount of his forces to take out that base. I feel like it's probably worth it though. Probably worth it. He's still building up a ton actually, and look at this man. 35 marines. How many bloody barracks does he have with reactors? One, two, three, four, and one over here building marauders. So is that all? I feel like he should have more. Oh, jeez, look at this man. That is crazy, crazy, crazy amount of macro. So really, really nice. This base thought he'd get a fourth, and the muters thought otherwise, but he's got really, really nice missile turret placement. This nice spread all the way over there. The muters could still get in here, but yeah, the marine reinforcements can't constantly coming out of there. Should be able to hold those guys off and sort of getting his fourth base back up, but I feel like Lucifron has definitely taken the momentum of this game. Uh, sort of. Still has an extremely good amount of macro. He's still at 74 workers. His upgrades are quite nice as well. Um, so he's doing a lot of things right, but Lucifron just pushing in and really doing the nice job and I think uh, I think uh, sort of needs to uh, needs to redefine his uh, unit composition a little bit. He's got the links. He's got the muters. He needs banelings right now. There we go. A few banelings coming in, and Lucifron doing a great run there. But I mean, sort of needs to be, needs to be thinking of something a little bit a little bit. Look at this repairing the uh, thing, and he's going to lose quite a few muters trying to take this command center down. Finally, he just gives up. Although all the marines are dead, there's just actually there's four left, so yeah, almost getting that, almost, but I feel like he just didn't have the banelings he needed there. He had a ton of lings, not so many banelings, and I think his gas income is sort of letting him down a little bit. He's got a ton of gas income, but you have a look, his gas income really, really small. He's constantly trying to build the marines, and I think his bailing numbers are suffering a little bit from the constant muta production. And banelings are really, really what he needs right now. He really needs a lot of banelings. Maybe cut back a little bit on the muters because the marine army is so heavy for Lucifer, and just really, really start going out with the banelings, doing a lot of stuff. And I think that could put Lucifer on a bit of a back foot because right now, Lucifer is just going out there and just dominating all over the place. And yeah, sort of is is just sort of on the back foot quite a bit. He's tried to do a couple of things. None of them have really worked very well, and meanwhile, Lucifron is just, uh, he's got a highway out here to the fourth base, and he is treating it like a highway. He's just constantly sending units all the way down. This is like the suburbs back there, and this is like the CBD, man. Every morning, they all just, uh, suit up, and they just drive down the highway to take this damn thing out, because, ah, uh, he's getting a ton of banelings, though. I really like this, and we will see, because this highway has a flank to it, and sort of could do so much damage here if Lucifron tries to move down. And here we go, get the bailings, get him in ready for a flank. He's moving in a small set of forces just to try and get there. He doesn't want to commit his full amount and sort of going to try for the flank anyway. But Lucifron very wisely pulling his forces back out of the way. He's got a siege tank shelling these units. Look at that beautiful attack waypoints we saw on those bailings. And Lucifron doing a great job. He knew there was a flank coming. He pulled back out of the way. Shelled a ton of the Banelings when the Banelings went in too far. The Banelings, they tried to get a flank and it wasn't quite the right time to get a flank. But they went in anyway. They got too close. The tank shelled them. All the Banelings died. And then Lucifron was free to move in and take out the hatchery. So awesome, awesome play from Lucifron there. Sort of had the right idea going for the flank. But he just picked the wrong time to do it. And... Obvious, he may not have realized that uh, the full force hadn't gone in. He saw like four or five units attacking there, and he thought maybe the full force had gone in. No, it was just a fraction of the force, and the rest of the force was waiting back there to intercept the flank. And man, it was so good. The Bailey is getting out there now, and look at this beautiful split, managing to micro and hit those Bailey with the Marauders and the Marines. Oh, it's such good macro, man. Trying to micro. To hit the banelings while ignoring the lings in here is so stupidly hard, but Lucifron just makes it look easy in this game, and 
Yeah, just everything, everything, uh, I don't know, man, sort of. Sort of is trying, he's trying his very, very hardest, but the Mutas have been fairly ineffectual at the moment, and Lucifer knows how to dodge Bailings. So, yeah, it's just, I mean, here we go, he's going to get a nice snipe off on this tank, and that is always a good thing, but look at the resources lost, man, there's 5,000 more. The sort of has lost that. Uh, here we go. This is what he's been waiting for. Is he going to get a beautiful flank? He is, but I don't know if he's got the bailing numbers. Here he goes. He's trapping all these guys in there, and a lot of units died there. Mothership tried to lift some up, but a fair amount did die there. And here we go. A um, couple more can think about dying, but sort of is really, really running out of army here. He really doesn't have that much. Getting a few more bailings in there. Lucifron starting to lose. A decent amount of forces, but his macro is just so much that I think he can still just keep on trucking, keep on moving on, and making this work. He's got just a crazy amount of macro at the moment. He's actually lost quite a lot of workers. I feel like sort of maybe uh, maybe going back there, maybe doing some stuff with bailings or lings or something like that. It's probably at this base. I saw the muters over at this base. Yeah, look at these workers. They look pretty uh, shredded up a little bit there, but you just can't build enough. You can't get the Bailings out fast enough to really hit these guys, and every time the Bailings come out, Lucifron just does so well at backing up, at doing the stim and run, at saving his guys, and he loses way less units than he probably should. Just getting the missile turret up there, and he's going to repair it now, so that should be really, really nice. Meanwhile, sort of going for a fifth base, and he's got a ton of defenses, but the full might of Lucifron coming in, and look at the Widow Mine spread. He knows how to deal with Bailings, and Widow Mines are a Bailings' worst nightmare. They just, uh, yeah, they, they come out from nowhere and they blow up everything, and the Bailings like, hey, that's supposed to be my job, but yeah, the Widow Mines are taking over. The Bailings coming in, getting some nice hits there, and some Infestors coming out. Fungal is definitely going to be helping, but is it just too little too late so far? I'm starting to think it may very well be too little too late, and... Yeah, Lucifer just continuing to push it, even doing a nice drop over here to take out some stuff back in the main base, looking for some tech buildings. There's not a lot. I do not know where the spire is. It's over here. But all he really needs is a bailing list. He's actually... Got, I saw an Ultralist cavern just come down. God knows how he's going to afford Ultralist because he is pretty much broke at the moment, but he's actually got saved up quite a ton of gas going for Lings. I think because he stopped the immune production, he's got so much gas right now. Nice bit of fungal there, the brood is going to finish him off, but we look at the army size, he is like 80 behind. His workers are okay, they're holding for now, but the army is so far behind. Getting some of these guys off, infested Terrans, hopefully going to finish this off. I do not know if fungals actually uh, show hidden units, I think maybe they do. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question actually, but right now he's pretty much just... He, all he's got is infestors. I don't know where the rest of his army is. Here comes a lot of units out there, but they're going right into the Widow Mines and just a stupidly large amount of damage done to that packed up ball of Lings and that's going to be it. That's all over, man. Just losing that massive amount of Lings. His, uh, his infestors are all out of energy and right to the brink, right to the edge. He got out some Ultras, man, but I feel like Ultras still wouldn't have worked. Between the uh, Widow Mines and the Marauders, Ultras, he could, I mean, if he got like 12 of the bastards, maybe he could start really making something happen, turning it around. But there was no way he was ever going to be able to afford 12 Ultras. I mean, he's got out two, and that's probably as much as he could get. And yeah, that's it, man. I mean, sort of, great, really, really great attempt. But Lucifron, I feel like he was just dominating all game, and just so aggressive. Macro was spot on. Everything was beautiful, so... Congratulations to Lucifron for just taking that game away, and sort of, man, great job in that game, and yeah, um, it's pretty didn't win, but there we go. Thank you very much for watching, is Daily Masters, I will catch you guys uh, tomorrow for another one, so stay tuned for that, this has been Harry Muppet.